Let me show you how to make a beautiful sourdough bowl just like this one from start to finish. You can either make one massive loaf like mine or two smaller loaves. You are going to need a kitchen scale. I highly recommend one for more consistent results and make sure to feed your starter four to eight hours before. It should have plenty of bubbles and should double in size. I'll throw all of the ingredients up onto the screen. I like to get my starter, my water, my salt, and my honey in the bowl. Give that a stir and then add in all of my bread flour. I always start this recipe at night, the night before that I want to bake my loaves of bread because this does have a 8 to 10 hour fermentation. So we're going to add our 500 grams of bread flour and in the beginning I like to stir with my dough whisk and then finish with my hands. I have all of my favorite sourdough tools in my Amazon storefront under a folder called sourdough tools. And if you wet your hands before mixing your dough, it will help to prevent the dough from sticking. Once we have a shaggy dough, we're going to cover and set a timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, we're going to do our first set of stretch and folds. Gently coax the dough up from the bowl on one side, pull it up over itself, and then push it down. And then turn the bowl a quarter of the way and then repeat this process until you go all the way around the bowl. Now we are going to repeat this process anywhere from two to four times. Once that's done, cover it, set another 30 minute timer. I like to use shower caps to cover my dough. It's just super convenient over a tea towel. And I bought a pack of 100 for a few bucks on Amazon. So I do have some shower caps in my sourdough tools folder on Amazon as well. So we just finished our second set. We're gonna cover and then set our last 30 minute timer before performing our last set of stretch and folds. I did three sets on this loaf of bread, but you can do anywhere from two to four sets and your bread will be great. And make sure to time your bread perfectly so that way it doesn't overproof. You want it to ferment about eight to 10 hours. I do it overnight. You can do this process during the day as well. And here's how she looked the next morning, beautiful and glorious. So we're gonna gently get that shower cap off the top. I probably should have oiled that, but no problem. I just gently peeled it back and then we're gonna flour our surface and gently coax the dough out of the bowl. After we get it out of the bowl, this is when we would separate our dough into two loaves if we wanted two smaller loaves. I'm doing one big loaf, so I kept my dough in one piece. And we're going to perform a set of stretch and folds, and this set is also going to serve as its very first shaping. So I gently fold it over itself and then roll it into a ball. And then I don't know what this motion here is called but it is creating surface tension on the top so go ahead and do that about 10 times and then cover and let rest for 10 minutes put some flour in a banneton or oil in a bowl and gently put your dough in it top side down and then we're going to cover that and let it rest anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes about 20 minutes before it's done we're going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees now here's our dough. It takes me about an hour for it to double. We're going to flour the top before gently coaxing it out of the banneton. So I flip that over. I have silicone bread sling, so I get that on top. And then I kind of shaped it a little bit more just to get it more circular. Flour the top and score. Which my score patterns very rarely stay pretty, but my loaves come out amazing, airy, plenty of bubbles. So we're going to put it into our Dutch oven, bake it for 30 minutes covered. After 30 minutes, take the top off, cook for 20 more minutes, and then bake it for 10 minutes right on the oven rack. Enjoy.